Uncensored brought to you by PointsBet. Check out PointsBet's great odds and offers. Download the Points Today and gamble responsibly. Well, today's guest is a former coach of mine. He's a three-time premiership winning player, Clive Churchill medalist, Dalian player and coach. He's played for New South Wales, Australia, and he's current Raiders head coach, Ricky Stewart. Thanks for joining me. Nicest uh, rep you've ever I know, that's it. Thanks for joining me, by the way. <laughs> mate, we're... Um, good, to, good to be able to talk to you. Yeah, we're in the city, mate. It's a beautiful spot. We're up here on level 11. Lucky this wasn't 2004, because there's times I probably would have th- thrown <laughs> me over the side. But uh, how's the break, man, mate? As a coach, um, what's it like for pre season? Like, players, we can just go away, and you don't have to switch back on. How much time do you actually get off to spend with your family? Because I'm sure there's a lot of planning and, and whatnot for the season ahead. From a coach's point of view, you probably get your... Out of the the players that are between seven and nine weeks off, and I think, yep. you know, genuinely you get your three or four weeks off as a coach. Um, you know, we have a week or so after the season um, finishes that we go in and have some, you know, probably quite a thorough review. Yep. Um, I don't do reviews, reviews, end of season reviews with players straight after the season because, mate, personally from a playing point of view, I don't reckon you you feel like it. Mm. I don't really think you get much out of it, and yep. you're listening, and I don't think you're as prepared as a coach either because. You go away then, have a look at all the stats, and you have a good in-depth uh, talk to the players. Uh, sorry, the uh, the coaching staff about what type of review for the individual and the team. So yep. we do that after the after the season finishes. Um, then the coaches go away, yeah. and it was really important this year, mate, that uh, the coaches had a break. Yeah. Like the tough players. year, was it tough? Yeah, it was. It was a um, it was a tough year mentally. Mm. Uh, now, Blake's my age. I mean, you're going going from work. Twenty one. Anyhow, yeah, thirty eight <laughs> next week. You're going from work to home. Yeah. Um, most days, anyhow. Yeah. It's uh, the, the thing I miss really with COVID was the fact I'd go down the pub and yeah. have a beer with my mates or yep. go out and have a feed. But um, for the players, the mental break is as important as the physical mm. break this year. How was the? Um, I don't know. It's, it's it's Canberra. You're not you're not on the other side of the country. But same day travel. How, how hard was that? Because that can wear you down in terms of getting up, getting there. But not only that. You got if you play a night game, you know you've got to get on the bus for three hours back. You want to get out of there as quick as you can. You're getting back at three, four in the morning. It, it to do that, toll. twenty weeks is. It, it, it took its toll, especially early in the season, which I think uh, it got us on the back end of the season. But early in the season, when we had to go to Campbelltown to play, mm. and although it was people think it's just down the road, it's a, yeah. it's a tough routine when you have got to go to a stadium. You're sitting in corporate boxes for two hours before you go to the change rooms and then play. Um, that was tough. Yeah, and it and it was difficult to get the players up. Be honest. And then you're playing in front of no one. Yeah, you were, and, and that was the same for everybody. But mm. the travel was difficult, um, but it was different. But I, Finch, I reckon this year we were we were better than the yeah. year before, and yeah. we we got to the grand final the year before. I think this year to be able to get to where we did with all the travel, all the injuries, and the schedule we had, I thought it was an amazing yeah, effort. And I was really proud of the boys, and you know, I'll, I'll get everybody back in late December, and, and I'm going to make sure they all know that too. It's important that they understand the appreciation from a uh, coach's point of view and what they actually delivered. Mate, I remember talking about reviews. I remember 2005. <laughs> Mate, I played shit house all year. No. And we're at Wentworth no, Park. That would have never come out. I'm coming upstairs <laughs> and I go into the lion's den, which was your office, which I didn't. I never liked going in. Usually when you sit down, it's all right, but when you, 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 sit, when, when you go sit down and go close the door, you go, oh, no. And you had these papers for the review. You look at me and just went like, you just threw the papers out there. Oh, I don't think that's a good <laughs> sign about the review. Um, you just have your own desk in my Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just sit in the bitch. You had my own chair. Um, oh, mate. mate, you're juniors. You played play junior. You played footy, but then you, you went to union because of school, because yeah. St. Eddie's. I played league and union ever since I was four yeah. and a half, five. Saturday, Sunday. How did you go? How did you like union? I like it. I mm. like union. Union was different when I played that. Mm. You know, where it was not as the... Interpretations and the, yeah. the rules today make it quite a difficult game yeah. to watch. And I've got two boys who play union. Both my boys play rugby union, so I watch a lot of it still. But the young cults and uh, the local the local footy's good. But yeah. the interpretations make it hard today to watch. But from when I was playing, it was a completely different yeah. game. It was a bit more attacking. And well, that's what I think of union. Obviously, being from the eastern suburbs, you see a lot of the silver spooners. The union. I'm sitting there thinking, how in the world has this bloke? <laughs> That's why I got out. How does he put? <laughs> not only how did they put up with him, how did you put up with with them? Like, well, it was a. Um, no, they were all good blokes. Uh, it was funny. I played the. Uh, you know what? I, I wouldn't play union with you because if I was on the bottom of a rocket seat, you would look at yep. my head and just go bang. <laughs> yeah, you never got me on the no, bottom of a rocket seat. I remember playing a, a game. 
with the Wallabies, um, Alan James was a coach and he was telling me the story that Michael Hawker was inside centre, I was playing 5'8". Michael Hawker came off and said, well, I've just found out what it's like to play with a rugby league 5'8". Yeah, exactly. So I, was, I was more suited to rugby yep. league, I believe. Um, but Union was good to me, mm. I enjoyed it. I was made to play Union, um, oh sorry, I was, I was made to give up rugby league at school when I was 16, yeah. so... I had to finish off year 11 and 12 playing for the first 15, but it was good for me. I, you know, Rugby Union was a um, uh, wonderful to me, and I learned a lot through Union, and I think I brought a lot of uh, Union back to the mm. league as well. Mate, how um, – we played for the Wallabies. You know, that's not, not a bad effort. <laughs> oh, look, how, I, how was that in terms – because that's something you forget when you, you talk about. You obviously – you're one of the greatest halfbacks ever, achieved everything in our game, but you played for the, the, the country in Rugby Union as well. Where does yeah. that sit when you think – Back on all your... Massive highlight. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, it really was. I was a young guy. Nick Far jones got injured and uh, in the, the first week of a tour in Argentina and Jonesy took me over and well, called for me to go over. So it was a um, wonderful experience. Um, I always... It was the reason I left school to um, stay in Union was to try and make the, the Wallabies. And I achieved that and um, I, I sat on the bench for a test and didn't get on. So it was a... Um, that was disappointing that I never got to play or start in a test match. But... Um, I was ready to go to the league yeah. when I got asked to uh, have a think about it. And that was through well, Warren Ryan. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, you, you come across in 88, is that right? Mm, that's well, right. What made you come across and had, 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 who got you over? It was funny. You? I was going to play a game with New South Wales, at uh, a trial match in, uh, at Warringah. And I still remember Warren Ryan walking across the car park with Brian Sutley and grabbed me and uh, said, mate, I want to have a chat to you about rugby league. And I said, I can't be seen talking to you here. Because in those days, Finchie, if, if you're a union player... Uh, and was amateur, and you're soon to be talking to the professional code, they'll sack you. Yeah. So I had a lot at stake. So I said, look, I'll meet you one night during the week. So we, he said, well, where do you know in Sydney? And I only just moved to Sydney to play for Manly. And I said, mate, the only place I know is the Batten Ball Hotel. So I met Warren Ryan and uh, Brian Park, Sutley. Uh, Anzac Park. Is it Moore Park Road? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Across the road from the stadium. Yeah. And, and Keith Barnes would come to the meeting. Yeah. I still remember walking out of there after having a, um, a couple of... Uh, couple of drinks with uh, Warren, I shook his hand and I said, mate, I'm going to go to rugby league, but I need to talk to John McIntyre first. And sat down with John, went back to talk to the Tigers and uh, went to Canberra. And Warren Ryan's still in the fetal position because <laughs> after you beat him in the 89 grand final, he would have been, well done, Mock, I'll tell you uh, what, no, I've no. done some stupid things in my time, <laughs> uh, not as bad as that brought your demise. We well, uh, go across, obviously, uh, the McIntyres are huge there, John and Les down in Canberra, and you've obviously got a great relationship with them, but... Had you known John, had you known the guys before? I knew uh, knew John McIntyre and uh, Don Ferner, yeah. senior, through uh, my, my early playing days as a uh, junior yeah. Premier Blues player, United. And um, I always had a handshake with JR yeah. that I would talk to John before I went back to, uh, made the decision to go back yeah. to league. And I just I lived to that, uh, yeah. honour that handshake. And I still remember making the call to the Raiders office and getting put through to John. I said, I need to talk to you. And, it went from there, and, and we sat down with um, uh, John For- at John Fordham's home. Yeah. I remember uh, JR, I think, uh, back in 80, uh, early 88, he came up and we met at John Fordham's home and um, basically did the deal then, and John and I went over to Balmain League Club the next day to uh, talk to Keith Barnes and, and Warren and just basically spoke to them about me wanting to go home. It yeah. was, was the big thing, and um, then the opportunity to play for the Raiders, but... But, but, mate, I went back there and they had three halfbacks. Mm. Kebby Walters and uh, Ivan Henjack and uh, Chris O'Sullivan. They were all on playing back to Brisbane pretty quick. Uh, well, well, mate, JR, JR told the, the Daily Telegraph the next day, he said, um, uh, no, Ricky's been bought here as a lock. And so I went up and seen him and said, mate, what, <laughs> what's, what's, this, about? what's this about it being a lock? He said, I'd much rather Dean Lance to have the shits than Chris O'Sullivan, <laughs> Ivan Henjack and Kebby Walters. Well, mate, did you know at that point... What was about to happen in terms of one of the greatest dynasties in football was about to evolve? Did you know how good? Had you followed much footy? And, and did you know, could you compete at that first grade level? Because it's, well, when would have been the last game of footy you played? Rugby League, 16? I was 16, so yeah. four, four years, three and a half years earlier. Oh, no, Finchie, it was a matter of uh, making a decision of what I wanted to do first. Mm. And that was go back to the league. Um, and then, then it was to play for the Raiders. Yeah. So it wasn't what was in front of me. It wasn't when was I going to play first grade. It was to play for the Raiders. And obviously I wanted to play first grade, but I didn't think it was going to happen that yeah. quick. Uh, the opportunity came. I think I played five or six second grade games. I joined round five, round six, I think. My first game yep. was against the Roosters yep. here, here at the Sydney Football Stadium uh, for second grade. Buck Rogers was my coach. But 
I think I played five or six second grade games and then got a call up. I got. <laughs> I went on. I went on with Bradley Clyde. I think I went on as a. I was on the interchange bench. Went on and played three or four minutes against the Broncos, and then next week you know, I got the opportunity. Oh, there was times it was close. Really? <laughs> Don't worry, I've been there. <laughs> well, not. Hey, we go on to eighty nine and. And obviously, it's it's one of the most famous grand finals in the hist- history of our game. You know, it's really the first grand final I remember as a kid watching. Um, you just finished fifth. Is that right? That's you just right. finished fifth. Yep. And that was top five then. No one had come from fifth. I know you're always pretty confident from my involvement with you, but what was the feeling in the team? It Was it, can we do this or we're just happy to, to – because 87, they obviously got beat by Manly in the – we had nothing to lose, mate. Yeah. I mean, nobody. But did you just think you could? Well, we're we, a personally, as a group of um, players, we were just taking every game as it comes yep. because everybody wrote us off. Nobody thought we should have been in the uh, semis, and, and rightly so. We, when I say rightly so, fortunately, um, we were lucky to beat Canterbury at Perth in in '88 in the last comp game. Mm. That was to make the semis. We had Ivan Hanjak set up a try for Meninga in the last moment of the game to actually put us in front to to make the five. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we are just taking every game and playing playing as though it was our last. Yep. But as we built and as we went on, confidence grew. Yep. And then we made it a real us, us v them because, you know. You never do that. No, <laughs> I was still trying to do it. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, mate, how big's the, you know, Canberra in the grand final again? That week, you know, it's a huge build-up. Just find yourself down 12-0. How, how, was, how was that? Do you remember – any specific thing Sheensy said at half time or yeah, self or yeah. Mal or anything? No, well, mate, I, I still remember Tim uh, being really upbeat and confident at half time saying we're playing the best football here. And we were actually playing very good footy. Mm. They got away to a couple of tries, but we were still playing really strong footy. And Sheensy was, um, Sheensy often said, I don't care what the score is at half time as long as we're playing better football. Yep. And it came to fruition. And then, mate, as we go on and the story's been told and we know the result, but. Just how confidence grew, yeah. and a lot of it comes from the belief the coach gave you. You know what it's like yourself. Yeah. What have been days I didn't give you a lot of hope. <laughs> no, well, you <laughs> know what? A lot of, a lot of confidence. And you know what? Some days I gave you plenty of reason not to give me plenty of hope. But, mate, you, I remember those some days. Chicka's try. Yeah. It's like, mate, there's 10 metres there, Chicka. No, nah, I'll step inside eight blokes and score next to yeah, the post. Mate, and Steve wonderful. Jackson's try. Yeah, it, um, it was wonderful. And that's just, that was age and experience into youth and exuberance yeah. and energy with Jack A's try, mm. you know. Chicka was wonderful. Yeah. He, he, he was one of my favourites to play with. Yeah. Um, such an under, underestimated yep. uh, player those days. and um, I think everybody in the team would say the same thing about Chicka. We all love Chicka. Mm. Mate, I, I, I remember Mal's interview too. You know, Obviously, you played with Mal for a long time. Mal coached me when I first came into grade. He, he was crying. Probably the only other time he was crying was when he had to coach me. But, <laughs> but the, the, I remember that. I, I, yeah, I remember that. He, how emotional he was, you know. Um, yeah, along the lines of, uh, you know, this is better than playing for yeah. Australia, this is better than playing Origin, this is the best thing you yeah. can do, and, and winning a premiership. Mm. And, and you know what that's like. And and it's it's 11, uh, 11 months, really 12 months, but it's 11 months of hard work. Yeah, and it's plus everything you want to do as a kid as well. You know, that's your dream. And mm. you look at it and you think, now I look back and think, Jesus, I was mm. so fortunate to win a comp. And um, to be honest, it's what keeps me in the game, uh, wanting wanting – that success yep. and mate, it's 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 a, a beautiful thing yeah. and it makes you so passionate for yeah. the, for for success. Yeah, it's funny what you say about success. It's I obviously we, we lost two together at the Roosters and, and I wasn't a part of that day too. And then I won late late in Melbourne. I said all I'd ever set up until I got them in Melbourne. I just want to win one. But as soon as you win one, you go. Shoot, I want more. You know, I want to win another one. It's a it's a Instead of addictive putting your feet much. up a drive, you done. Yeah, you, want, you want to do it again. Mate, it's just so addictive, and that's what uh, we, you know, for me, that was the greatest thing for my probably um, inexperienced semi-final, grand final team, yeah. the youth we got at Canberra. That experience last year in nineteen was a you can't coach that. Yeah, you, you can't get it outside being there. Yeah. So that was a uh, a wonderful uh, bit of foundation and platform. Hopefully, going into the next two or three seasons mm. with these players, mate. I know. You're a great judge of a schooner. You love a beer. Now, the, the celebrations in '89. Now, I think I remember you telling me you spent like four dollars in three weeks, and it was on, it was on you like a, a you got a good memory. like on a Philip yeah. Burger meal or something. The KFC. Mate, he said honestly, the boys were coming out of nightclubs and did. just stopping traffic, get, we, yeah. and they're going this. They're going, no, we want to go pub there, right? They'd give you a U-turn. Just I said that don't happen anymore. 
Mate, I, um, I, I'm genuinely, if I wasn't out four nights a week for six weeks, I was out five. Yeah. And um, The town went bananas, right, didn't it? it? Just, and we saw that again last year with the boys, that the town gets behind our players. And I often say you don't need to be born in Canberra to feel as though you belong in Canberra. Yep. You know it's like yourself. It, 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 if you want to make it a home, it's a home. Yeah. And, and the Pommy boys that we've got, the guys that we've got at Canberra now that are outside – Outsiders from being born in Canberra, there's a lot of them. All feel part of yeah. it because we make it that way. Yeah. It's our second family, and you're with you're with those players and their families more than more than your own at times. So yeah. that second family is a very important part of the ingredient towards making it a happy culture, yeah. a happy club. Well, you just go back to the grand final the next two years in a row. Obviously, win 1990. I think it was 1814. You get beat uh, in, a, in a close one against the Panthers. How, how hard is it's hard to win one, mate. It's hard to get to a grand final. You just made three. How how hard was that mentally, especially being in a position which you know? Ninety ninety uh, was a lot easier than eighty nine because we had that we had that belief then. Yeah, the and, confidence. Oh yeah, yeah. It, and we we never thought we were going to get beaten. You no, know, from game one right through to the back end of the season, we just played with that belief that we were a better football team. And and to be honest, Finchie, I was so fortunate to come through that era, yeah. mate. I, you know, I, I probably get raps that I don't deserve in regards to my ability. It was the players I had around me. Yeah. I had like Boxhead inside me. He was probably the, um, then was one of the best hookers yeah. the game had seen. I had um, Laurie, you know, one of the best five eight centers the game has seen. And th- these guys are all immortals. Mm. You know, these guys to me are. I seem they forget about folks like Gary Belcher and unbelievable. Yeah, you know? and, and Chris O'Sullivan, mm. um, you know, playing five eight um, those days when Laurie was center. You know, he, he was there from day one. And he, he goes down, you know, pound for pound, probably the toughest half that I've seen. Um, so, you know, we had a I, – I was fortunate. I had so much ability yeah. around me. And for me, I, it was all about getting them the ball. And, mate, it was 94. We just had a team there that was just built on confidence. And having Meninga – Meninga as our leader, he was the sort of player that as long as I, he ran across the sideline, I knew I was going to be a better yeah. player. You know, he just built – he just – Built confidence off the yeah. bloke, he delivered that uh, in the individual. But um, then you look at the Gary Coins, Dean Lance, as a Brent Todd's, my blue cattle Glenn, dogs, aren't Lazarus. They? Yeah. You know, Glenn Lazarus oh, yeah. is a, for me probably the, one of the best front rows yeah. the game has seen. But the, the the youthfulness and the experience with the senior players was a wonderful blend. Yeah, mate. I obviously you'd like to touch on there ninety four, and this is not sounding. But ninety five, he's had a great team, probably the best team all year after Mary Todd. Ninety three. You're probably the best player in the world at this stage. You're winning everything. Canberra's untouchable. You break your ankle. I think break your ankle, break your leg. Bruce Stadium against Para. Late in the season, team can't win a game again. You use a chance of, like, I'm not saying this, you could have won more than the three Yeah, I, we, we were unlucky in 93 for a couple of reasons. One, um, I, I just had one of those seasons, mate, where the, I was getting the bounce of the ball. Yeah. Uh, you, You'd fire a pass and hit the spot. You chip and you get it back, and it was just one of those seasons. I chipped it, went dead on the full. So. <laughs> As I said, you get such a bad rap. Um, the '93 season, the biggest issue was when I got injured. Yeah, we never had another halfback okay. who had any experience of playing with the boys, mm. playing first grade, because I didn't get injured very often. But you're such a dominant player, person, but in like in character in the team as well. To that, surely would have had an effect. I suppose it, it does affect your rhythm, say, late yeah. in the season. If, if the best thing for the, the, the team and the club then, it would have been for me to get injured yeah. halfway through the year. So he said, because then you had young halfbacks coming Come through, through. would have had the time to adapt and find the rhythm in the team. Uh, the team's you know, mojo. Um, but it's very hard, you know, as yeah. a halfback coming in where you haven't played with this group of people, yeah. then coming into a first semi final, mm. that, was, that was very tough on those young blokes. And. It was the last game they had to play in young Shredell, I think it was, and yeah, Stephen Stone. Shane. Yeah, you know, I, I felt for those guys because they didn't have the uh, the opportunity to be even training mm. with first grade, let alone to come and play at such a, a big part of the season. Certainly set up um, an opportunity for Sticky Eyed now on the drink a few months later. What are we going, Jesus boys? <laughs> Obviously, you just can't do it without me. <laughs> it's not bad for the ego <laughs> no. as well. I had too many uh, had too many egos around me to knock me in the head. Um, with that. Did Sheens ever have to pull this in the line or? Give you a kick in the pants, you know, just an attitude adjustment here and there because not ego's not the word, but there was a 
fucking superstars in the team. You know, like, and you're there winning. You yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah, you go, it's the word. <laughs> but big, big head. But there's there you a, you know, and, the and there's a times, you know, I remember you, you had to do it, the teams win, you know, like some weeks you think you're going to roll out there and this will yeah. all just come to us and you get your pants pulled down, you know. Did they ever need. He did. Yeah, and, mate, and, and uh, what was he was, like during was, that time as a coach? There was a massive profile in the team, mate. Yeah. You know, young. Young players such as Clyde and Loz and Boxhead. Yeah. Uh, the senior players such as Mal, your Belchers. Um, we had, you know, Lazo. Um, we, we had so much profile getting into the 93, mm. 94. Yeah, Sheensy did have yeah. to pull our, pull our heads in. And, and he did it real well. Yeah. And, mate, we respected Sheensy. I mean, yeah. I remember coming in after. You have to be a pretty strong leader with all those. Absolutely. <clears throat> and we respected Sheensy. 90, 91, we won 89, 90, 91. The first meeting we had when we got back uh, to pre season was Shinji Stevie Walters, anywhere he'd go, he'd say, How many comps have you won? So <laughs> the first, first message was, If I fucking hear yeah. anybody say, How many comps have you won again, you won't be playing at this club. So we didn't hear that again. Yeah. But that was just his message, his way of saying, Hey, listen, pull your heads in. Yep. We've got to start again. And, you know, to, to the club's credit, uh, the team's credit, you know, we, we were pretty good. We, yeah. We didn't have too many blokes who got too far ahead of themselves because you did. You had you had some senior players yeah. there, and Dean Lance was a wonderful um, uh, leader at that at that uh, club at the club, and at that time, you know, he pulled you back in yeah. gear pretty quickly. What, Gary what, Coyne and those blokes—they're senior men. What What do you think made that team? Because I love champions. Everyone loves an underdog. I love a champion because to be a champion, once you've achieved that, you never got to work twice as hard just to achieve the same thing, and everyone's coming after you. Look, that team not only had great that club, sorry, not only had great team success, they had great individual success. You're all playing for Australia and your state. What made you just want to turn up and and go again? And what kept the fire in the belly when you had already done it multiple times? Wanting to win again. Yeah. You know, wanting to win. Um, wanting to set a standard as a team. Finchy, those days, mate, as I said there a moment ago, we had a great balance yep. of youth and experience. And in, in some of that youth, there was there was – some of the greats yep. that'll be mentioned for a long time, such as you know Lazo, Laurie, Clyde, and I'm missing names there. I don't want to don't want to miss any because every anybody and everybody had a, pl- a role to play. But um, this this the club itself and the senior leadership, you know, from JR down to Tim. Um, JR knew his role as an administrator. Tim coached. Tim Tim wouldn't put up with bullshit. Yeah, um, he's a Wonderful coach and wonderful educator of the game. And then the, the, the seniors that he had around him that could actually deliver the message. Yeah. You know, and you've got to give credit to the boys um, such as, you know, the Coins and the, 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 the Lancers who, you know, we had Ashley Gilbert there. We had players there who were senior men. They had families and they um, um, were mature. Yeah. And then obviously Mal, who, who's, you know, we know how, how, how big a leader he's been in the game. They, they kept us yeah. very balanced. And um, winning, winning, as I say, winning's addictive, mate. And yeah. We knew preparation was only going to come through hard work. Yep. Um, and the hard work we we certainly did did get because it was uh, it was we relied upon our standards as working hard. You had amazing, you tough to be, and you had an amazing record down at Peru Stadium. And I don't remember, I don't know what year it was. I was ball boy for the night. Dad was coaching lower grades. We go down to Bruce Stadium. No, Bruce Stadium. You know, you got to go down the stairs. Remember Eric Cox, the old timekeeper? Yes, yeah. So he'd come and bang on the door and tell you when you got to go out. This is in first grade. I remember, mate, I'm 10 or 11, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Eric Cox, and you were already out in the field, the nights are running late. Now Eric Cox bangs on the door and said, Come on, Newcastle, you won't win it in there. And Jamie Antio goes, We won't fucking win it out there either, Eric. And like the, all the boys just laughed and they knew it was like lambs to the slaw. They went out and you just yeah. absolute. Newcastle didn't win down there like for 20 years or something. But I remember like it was yesterday. Come on, Newcastle. Uh, you won't win it in there. And he, and he said it just looked at us. We're not going to fucking win it out there either, Eric. Um, Mate, that was, you know, and that's funny you say that because um, that's how we felt. We, 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 we had that belief in our, our game and the confidence in each other that we were, we were going to be tough to beat. Yeah. But when we did get beaten, we got beaten through, obviously, you know, the other teams yep. were better than us on the day. Um, you go back to, you know, there's, there's probably blokes who took their foot off the pedal through the yep. hard work or were a little bit too confident. But um, Shinji, Shinji was a very, very hard yep. hard coach on those types of behaviours. Mate, another thing I remember, the, the 90s for New South Wales, 92, 93, 94, obviously I was around 10 or 11. It's one of my favourite periods. I think most successful, my favourite New South Wales era. 
Look, the team stayed pretty much similar the whole way through, but you were obviously a huge part of that with Loz and Freddie and Chief, Lazo, Ciro, Benny. Now, how was that to be a part of such a golden run of New South Wales? Because yeah. before that, it had been a few years, hadn't it, before New South Wales? It was great. Uh, for, for me as a young player, it was a great development as a player. Yeah. Um, and what was Gut like, Gus like as well? On the, on the I had, uh, in my coaches uh, as an origin player, I had um, uh, my first coach was Jack yeah. uh, Gibson into Tim into uh, Gus, all three very different coaches. Gus was a wonderful motivator in an origin period. Um, he had a football team there that uh, needed a bit of direction, but we needed to be bonded together, yeah. and he had great motivational ability in doing that. And he, he, actually, uh, he actually probably coached and explained why origin is so important, yeah. and he made it important. And then all of a sudden, once something's important, it's personal to you, and if it's personal, mate, you know what it's like. Yeah. You know, you're, you're 120% out of it. And that's where Gus was great and had a, had a great run of success. But he made it very personal, and that's what I think Origin's about. You know, it's not about just going in there to be coached on strategy or structures, because I don't think strategy or structure wins Origin matches. I think it's that personal, that personal feeling. Yeah, it's the emotion. desire. Yeah. And obviously there's... I remember Troy, you set up for Mary McGregor down at the MCG in Game 2 in 94. Another one... The footy stadium, I think, where you dummied him and went through, went past Big Marty Bella. You've been watching some old tapes, mate. Well, I was still in the head. I wonder if I've got so many issues. Everything's still up here. Um, I remember like, yesterday. It must have been great then. To, not that you're taking the next step. You're already a premiership winning Clive Churchill medalist. But now you guys, you know, this yourself, Laurie, Clyde, you're dominating. You're dominating at state level. It's, it's starting to spread all across the league at all levels. We, we, were, we were lucky that we had the cohesion there coming from club footy. And then when we played for Australia, Bozo actually picked a lot of uh, um, the combinations that were playing at club level too, and it worked for him. But you know, having Brad and Laurie uh, inside, outside me, there was that chemistry, and, and I knew where Laurie was. I only had to hear him. I didn't have to see him. Um, and I knew Claudia was going to do my tackling. Yeah. How, how lucky was I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I often tell Claudia if I didn't let him do my tackling, no one did. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you made him. He was he was brilliant, Brad. Yeah. Another guy that's probably not spoken of as much as uh, some other guys who are still in the game or the media today. You know, guys who have not taken that path of being in the game or um, uh, involved in coaching, staying in the game. It's a uh, um, they don't hear as much of them. <laughs> So um, Bradley was uh, unique. You talk about Bozo keeping with regular combinations. Well, you thought 1990 and 94 Kangaroo Tour, he picks Alfie. You'd think he would have got it right the first time. <laughs> he fucking picks him that's again what, for 94. And you had to come back and save him. But I remember sitting up in, <laughs> in 1990. Bozo. I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> no, he's run over me with one of these cement trucks he's got for uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Billy. Yeah. Um, I, you will. Yeah. Uh, I remember in 1990, you used to get up in the middle of the night, <laughs> Kangaroo Tour as a kid. David Morrow, I think, was the Thirsty, yep. was the coach. I oh, sorry, the commentator. Yep. Yep. You just play. You come in game. You play five eight game one. I think with Alfie. Uh, you just get beat at uh, Wembley, and then game two you're at Manchester, Old Trafford. I think you and Cliffy are the halves That's combination. Right. You score that wonderful try. Et kicks it back in. Goes through, and then anyway, you throw an intercept. I think it's is it Eastwood his name intercepts that scores. Uh, the, yeah, I think the it Pommies. Was. Yeah. So you put them in front. Yep. What are you thinking at at this point? Um. As the competitor so, that you yep, are. Mate, I was, I was I've probably being selfish because I was thinking of me. Of course you did. And, and thinking, you know, I've let not just the boys down, I've let, let, let Australia down. They hadn't won the Ashes for years and years and years, and now they're in a position to win the Ashes. And I still remember, we, we did this seven-minute drill at the Raiders, and Sheenzy had this drill where it was seven minutes of uh, drill, and it was to show you how much football is left in seven minutes. minutes. Mate, there were seven minutes left. Because a lot line. of time when you look at the seven minutes and you're behind, and this was my biggest fault, you think, we yeah. need to score now. We're, yeah. You know? Yeah, you are. You're thinking, this There's is no time happen. left. This is going to happen straight away. Yeah. It's funny because Gary Belcher grabbed me and, and abused me for thinking of me and saying, mate, seven minute drill and got up me. And it sort of pulled me up and thought, Oof, we've still got a lot of footy left. And then, you know, as the game went on, it unfolded. But we still had a number of sets. Yeah. Each each team had a number of sets, and um, it, it it goes to show you that the practice does actually get replicated in games. And you know, and this seven minute drill just tri- triggered me like that, and straight away it just stimulated me into thinking we've still got a lot of yeah. time left here. Well, I'm glad you thought that way because you come up with one of the 
you know, the greatest try assist in, in kangaroo history. You, you make a break, you dump your way through about 20 metres out from your line. What were you thinking? Holy shit, there's 80 metres to go, no one knew. But you, then, know, you know how I often say there's no hope in footy? Yeah. And this is where I got it from. It's funny, you know, how little things come out of the game and you can take it into coaching. But I often say there's no hope in footy. Don't, don't kick and hope. Don't pass yeah. and hope. You've got to be confident in or believe in what you, you think that next bit of skill or execution has got to be is, is required. As I took, I went to the right-hand side of the field and I was going to kick ahead for ET. And that kick was going to be, I hope he can get it. Yeah, no. Nah. And as I left, as I kept on going, don't worry, I, I wasn't that fast. So I'm thinking, who's going to get me? I just kept finding more space. And mm. as I found more space, then this big shadow came yeah, over me. Yeah, knocked out something, comes up the inside. Big George come <laughs> on my outside, then on my inside, and I think, holy hell, you know, I've got yeah. a two-on-one here with the fullback. So as we drew to a two-on-one, the kick would have probably... When you look at it now, and I've watched it a number of times, the kick would have been swallowed up by the fullback on, yep. that, on my right sideline, and it would have been all hope for ET to get there. But as the play eventuated, you know, the, the I, I can't believe like I took a good fifteen or twenty metres off Mal when yeah. I, I took off, and Mal got there. So you talk about making it personal, that yeah. desire, and that was what we, must have been an amazing Mal. feeling, mate. Uh, honestly, it, it was. Yeah, and from a personal point of view. It was the best feeling I've ever yeah. had in the game. Because I know how personal you make it for, for halfbacks. Yep. One thing I got from coaching you, obviously, you put a lot of pressure on the halfback, and I, and that he decides the decision. But I remember games I'd play well, and you'd come in and you'd look at yourself in the mirror or you're having a shower, and you just knew you, you felt so proud that because you took so much responsibility. And I only imagine you did that to your halfbacks because you would have <clears throat> had that mindset as a player yourself. I, I've got a I've got a rap that I. Put a lot of pressure on my halves, and and you know I, I probably do. But that's good. But it's not it's not a disrespect. No. I tell you, Finchie, before the ninety grand final, I was told and um, through Don Furness Senior that uh, he was a selector for the Australian team that I had to play well. If I didn't play well. I was going to well, I wasn't going to make the kangaroo team, the kangaroo tour, and now I wanted to make that tour. Yeah. And if I said that to a young player today, they'd crumble. Yeah. So I try and. I do put pressure on my players because I believe if you can't handle the pressure, you're not yeah. going to be able to deliver the, on the on, on big to. day. And if you're not, if you don't have that mentality as a halfback anyway, I could have scored three tries. If we lose, then well, yeah, I take well, responsibility for it. I I say, and I know uh, Gould, Gus Gould's always said, I, I don't understand what you mean by this, but I always say that the 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 halfback owns a result. Oh. I've always felt that as a player. I always mm. see it as a coach because I reckon the halfback's in such a dominant position to yeah. when I say own a game to control a game. And I believe the good ones win a lot of games for teams. And usually the the character of the team is a reflection of the character of your, your halfback in all the ways, or your key players. And I agree. And, and, and as I say, you, you give yourself a bad rap. If, if, if every half had your the will to win and the competitive drive that you had, I'm a happy man. Yeah. Because you can, build, you can build the skill and the structure around that competitiveness. You haven't got that compete to win. You haven't got that hatred of lose, losing. I don't want you as a half. I remember another try you uh, set up in 94. This time it's for, for Dean Parr. I think it's in game three at Ellen Road uh, in the Test Series. We reenacted that try on our bed because here's my room in the 94 tour. Yeah. We reenacted that, that try until about quarter six in the morning. Exactly. Four x cans. Mate, well, I did the same with um, <laughs> with club sandwiches with my field goal in Origin. I go and everywhere. I got kicked out of the crowd fires. That's when I turned up to training and I was still in New South Wales. New South Wales tracks who come to the train, you looked at me and went, fuck, I've got to deal with this now. <laughs> but I didn't have enough problems handling oh, this. Oh, my God. But, mate, I remember you went through and it was they like a... both gates for you to get in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, was that, that was just for me teeth normally, but um, but you flicked around the back. But, mate, that, that, that flick pass, unbelievable. You go through and then two on one instead. Of, like, that was a Benji before Benji even started. But your ability, and I remember when I was when I come to uh, play under you, you're kicking still then. You'd be doing bigger bo- – you'd you'd have to kick for me because your bombs are bigger than mine. You'd go, you go Fitchy, fuck your kicks off, Sticky. But your, your, your skill with kicking and passing revolutionised the, the game. It, it wasn't just from rugby union, mate. I'd be at the Oval every day. People, Practicing. People call it practice. Yeah. I call it having fun. Yeah. I used to play football against myself yep. when I was a kid, and I, I just loved it. Yep. Every every day, whether it was, whether it was cricket practice or um, winter, you know, I'd have yep. a footy kicking around somewhere or whatnot, and you'd go and have a game of cricket, or you'd have a footy there and have another kick. But that was just fun for me. Mm. Um, going back to Dean Pay's try, he, he, when we were down in Canberra coaching together, he said to my young blokes, he saw it on a fox or something somewhere, and he said, that was uh, my greatest try for yeah. Australia. 
I said, really? He said, yeah, it was me. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> How many just score and hunt? <laughs> well, you go into coaching at a, at a young age and you, and you get picked up by the Roosters. I think you had the one year out, you coached the Jersey flag team of the Dogs. I think you just won the – Yep. Yep. Um, obviously, you retire early with the injury. You, the, not 2002, you go to the Roosters. The Roosters come eighth. So, so they're not a shambles. But historically known, for lack of a better term, as underachievers maybe. They had one since seventy five. And it's a pretty it's a hot seat, is it? You know, it's yeah, been knows the translations. What decided for you to make that decision with a lack of experience in terms of coaching to, to go then Gus. Yeah, Gus. But I still remember visiting a mate of mine uh, in hospital at uh, Ramwick and the phone went it was Gus. And he said, You got a moment to speak? I said, Yeah, I walked outside and had a quick chat and he said to me, Would you be interested in coaching the Roosters next year? And I said, mate, no, I'm not ready. I said, I haven't got the ability to coach first grade level yet. He said, I'll help you. So again, he told me his role. And I said, oh, mate, I, I, don't, I don't think I, I, I'm ready. And I said, look, if I get there, I don't know what to do the next day. He said, I'll make sure you know. I'll make sure you're ready. And I thought, you know what? I said, I wouldn't want sitting down having a chat yeah. about it then. And I, and I did, and so it was Gus really yeah. talking me into it. And I don't think I was ready. Uh. I, I had to learn on the run. And I've probably still got some old school in me today that I learn on the run. And I still think today that old school is uh, – some old school can be uh, new school for a lot of our players. Well, mate, the, the thing too, the Roosters, a lot of coaches, young coaches, to get a start, they've got to go to the – just take anything they can get. And usually they don't last too long, you know, um, because it's, they're out the door. The, 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 the joint wasn't a rabble. But what sort of do you think they need? Obviously, your, your tough approach or your competitiveness and um, the expectations – but you also coached Freddie. Was, was that a concern? Because you two played a lot of footy together. There's not too much age difference Mate, between we, the two of us. But no, there wasn't a lot. Um, I think for me to get the job, uh, Nick Pilatus believed in uh, Gus. I know he sees him as a, uh, a confidant in the game. Um, so when I did take it on, the first thing I went to do, I went out here to golf with Freddie. So, uh, You've had a wonderful relationship. Yeah. Moment. I still do. You know, Freddie... Freddie's a good person. And I, and I said to Brad, I said, I'm going to make sure I'm the hardest on you, Brad. And I said, it's got to be seen that way, mate, because I've played with you. You know, he's only just not long at my, my wedding, you know. Yeah. I said, I played with you, Brad, played against you. And I said, it's going to be, you're going to be the leader for the team. And I said, mate, I've got to be the hardest on you. So if that's seen, <clears throat> everyone, um, else. everyone else smells it. And I didn't have to be. He, he, he was a, a, a great leader of men in regards to the way, he, the way he did it. Yeah. And, it was his training ethic. It was his um, love of the club at the mm. Roosters um, and love of the game. Yeah. The, the, all the boys followed him. And if I had the boys following Freddie, it made my job easier. Yeah. But um, the biggest thing I had to do there, I think they got beaten in the first semi the, the Newcastle, previous year yeah. under Graham Murray. <clears throat> um, the biggest thing I had to do, mate, and I said to the players, that the one thing I want you to do is to, I need you to get out of confidential, I need you on the back pages of the paper. So that was... That was just creating some... Pretty discipline. hard when you had some good sorts. Wingy, Rico. <laughs> yes, it was hard. Uh, mate, but uh, the the um the thing I thought too, Freddie's last three years were the best three years of his. And I, had, I had him on here as a first guest. I'm uncensored and he's openly said it. He goes, mate, the last three years of my career were my best three years. Well, you go back and have a look at his training ethic. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. A, always there, first yeah, one there. He was. He trained hard. He prepared well. And that's, that was the backbone of Freddie... Probably enjoying and um, probably enjoying his last three years as much. I remember we used to do um, hundreds. You invented the four and five, which is four laps of five. I don't know where you got, got that, that from Canterbury. That ridiculous, yeah. that was a ridiculous <laughs> idea of yours. I thought um, the same when I was at Canterbury. Oh, I remember Chris Walker was about half an hour late. We'd gone. From, <laughs> <laughs> we'd come back after Christmas break on a Friday. We do the boop yeah. test. We yeah. all do. If you get the fourteen, you stop. We all get the fourteen. You're ecstatic. You give Walk the biggest compliment ever. Walk things were beautiful. <laughs> he goes, he gets blind all weekend. It's Monday morning. We're looking around, walks is not here, and we're just thinking. Oh, yes, Marks. Yeah, yes, but we're thinking, mate, just don't turn up now. If you're not gonna, if you're not here on time, don't turn. He flies in with his Monaro. Is that lad? He comes in and we can just <laughs> see you. You're half you can see him. We're going, no, guys, everyone over on the side four and five. This is like, oh. but, but I even remember the, the hundreds. You talk about Freddie's leadership. We'll do. We'll start off with sixty hundreds. So it was a four week, four week preseason block to Christmas. Every Friday would be the hundreds, or it might be the Wednesday and the Sandhills on Friday either. Or 
you go 60, 70, 80, and then the last ones were hundreds, hundreds. Yeah. Anyway, this food, if not, not only did your foot have to be behind the line, your foot couldn't even be on the line. It's like, can't, like, I'm walking into this joint going, oh, shit, this is how good teams train. What, what have I done? Can I get a ticket back to Canberra? It's like, mate, you'd get to, you'd get to 52 hundreds. You've been going for an hour running a hundreds, and your big toenail might be like, add another one to it. You're going like, or you miss the time. But, but, mate, we used to got to, you know, by my second year there or by the end of it, Mate, 60 hundreds, you see young kids. I'm thinking 60 hundreds is not too bad, boys. We're only doing 60 hundreds. Yeah, yeah. You see young kids going, they'll be going white in the face, going 60 hundreds. And it was menta- Yeah, but our mentality in the end, I remember you get to the point where I'd be, you'd be laughing at blokes who were struggling, you know. You'd be running for an hour and a half. But, I, but you made us think that. We, we may have not been the fittest, well, but you, we, we you thought we were. And else was doing it. Yeah. And you, and you know why the team was doing it. And it was purely to be the mentally toughest. And we yeah. were. Yeah, and we were, mate. It was to make three grand finals in a row. It's very it hard, a wonderful it? effort, and it comes back to your mental toughness. All Bert, we had a wonderful football team. We had yeah. some great players, um, but we were we were down in grand finals and won grand finals, and then we were in a position where we were competing again in another two. And it was a wonderful time for the yeah. club. But uh, it came down to um, you know, again, I go back to that hard work ethic. Yeah. You don't like doing it when you're doing it, but gee, it's, yeah. it's good when you uh, when brings the team there. together too, doesn't it? Does. It? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I. And I still like the boys having a beer. Yeah. You know, and we in those days I'd go and have a beer with you blokes. Yeah. And uh, you know, I remember you, you, you boys. Have have a, have a, have it used to be good, good when you'd come and you'd have you'd, a good weekend. You'd get a block of ice in the back of the head or someone <laughs> ch- someone choke me out from behind get on the toilet. I'd be there for oh it's the coach, what can I do? Um uh, I eight two years win the grand final, your first season as a coach. Amazing effort. First uh, grand final for the Roosters since seventy five. Um, how was that? Mate, um, <clears throat> I'll never forget it yeah. uh, And it's why I keep coaching today yeah. Finchie Because I want to win another comp um, And that's why I, I was you know, it was So hard taking the loss uh, in 19 Because it's, uh, as you know It's so hard to get to And it's what makes me keep coaching today Was the win, that, that one win in 2002 And um, as much as I love being around the players And coaching players And um, having, having them as mates I want to win. I want to, I want to. I want to win a comp at the Raiders, and I'll. Um, you know, I'll just keep working as hard as I possibly can with the boys until we can, and or hopefully find someone who can do it for us. Before we move on from the Roosters, I remember how hard it was those years oh five oh six. Now I look at you put a lot of pressure on me. I but then put a lot of pressure on on um, the players. Some of us players go, mate, you got to ease up on me. I'm going, well, fucking hang on. I'm. Copping the heat for you, but then you were copping the heat, and oh, I'm not, yeah. we're not here to. No. It was a tough year, few years when it was, yeah. and a lot of the times, and I tell some great stories. That, mate, you you keep me on the public speaking circuit. Our, our, our stories, you know, and we clashed. If I know, I say with us when it was great, and when it was good, it was great when we were yeah. playing great because we were very similar people. When we were losing, we we're very similar. So we mate, butt, we butt heads I'd, a lot, but we butt heads because we were both I'd, wanted I'd put, to win. I put too much pressure on on you those days, and it was probably a reaction of the pressure I was copying. Yeah. Being a young coach, um, and we, we both wanted to win, and, and yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. the thing. I'd hammer blokes, and, and but it, it was a it wasn't a good environment. I termed it the, the pressure. No. You come off three grand finals, you, they don't make a grand final year. That, those two years were tough. We had a lot of uh, young Polynesian boys coming yeah. to the club. Um, I still got one playing today with me in Sue Saliola, but they were young Polynesian boys, and it was just a time in the period where young Polynesian boys were starting to come into rugby league, and. We were an old school team, weren't we? Yeah, we were. And we had uh, we had a little bit of a break in the, the squad there where yeah. we had the senior boys, we had the young blokes there, the young Polynesian boys there, and then I had to try and bond us together. Mm. One thing I still remember, and maybe I should have took the advice of Gus, in um, after after four, 2004, he said, you're going to have to get rid of some of these senior boys. Yeah. And we've got to start again. And I didn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear of it because of what those but, boys but, did for me. Yeah. Getting two and three and four season, mm. uh, you know, making grand finals. And, and I I didn't like that, and it was probably the part of the coaching that I um, I learnt, but I wanted to stay yeah. loyal to those guys. But, but you've always been loyal, mate. I, and you used to ride me hard, but if someone else bagged me, you'd blow up. It's like, <laughs> no, I can fucking kick shit out of him, but no one else touched no, my no. man. But you would, you'd just stand yeah. up me. And it was even like so much with Hudson Young. I was... Um, Commentating the game, and I reacted quite harshly on, on, and not attack at the kid, but I thought that the action was poor. Maybe I probably went over the top with twenty weeks, 
And yeah. you, you come out and defended him. You did say my name, but I, I obviously yeah. you was directed at me. I do a thing for two GB or one of the with uh, Levy and Pig. I said, ring me and I said, mate, I'm not. I expect that from yeah. Sticky. Mm. Sticky bites back at me. I said, I played on him. I'd expect nothing less than he to do that. I said, yeah. I said I'd expect that from him. He's he's always just stuck up for his point. You did that with Curtis Scott. Yeah. I had Curtis on here. Um, no Curtis from Melbourne, and he yeah. said if he said he fell apart. Some days he didn't want to wake up in the morning. He said, but. He had you blokes still sticking by him. If you blokes don't stick by him, yep. he don't, mate, he could have, anything could happen. But you've always so been those, a coach. Yep. You, and, and you ride them hard, but you, you're there with them. Sometimes to your, the detriment of your coaching. Yep. Um, you know, sticking with those senior boys after 2004, I wouldn't hear anything of it. Um, and even if Hudson Young was in the wrong, he still needed someone to support yep. him. And you, mate, and you would be a good coach, Finchie, because you're a law kid too and you're a, you're, you're a person that understands the game. And it's not just about the strategy of how you play the game, it's the actual the relationships you build with the players. Now, I don't, I don't want, and I say this a lot, I don't want the players to have to love me or, or like me as long as they trust me because I'm there for them. Yeah. That's the thing. And once they see that I'm serious about building the relationships, yeah. I make it personal, um, then the strategy of how to play the game yeah. comes. And, and, and it's, I think the man management and the relationship building in coaching is... is Number one, it's yep. so important first it because otherwise you won't listen to me. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 you, if you didn't get me in the training room, we got it at the bar anyway, we couldn't help it. Uh, you go down to Canberra, mate, you return home. This is a few part question. This one What was it like returning to, to the Raiders where you became a, a superstar player? You're obviously now working with Donnie Ferner Jr., who I know is one of your best mates. And what was it like with the rebuild? I, I look back and see what yourself and Peter Mulholland have done. It's, it's quite extraordinary to see where the club is now, where it's, the expectation is you're challenging for premierships every year. Mate, I, I think the big part of the rebuild, uh, Finchie, outside the, the talent that we've um, identified, I mean, when you're recruiting, I, I want to rec- recruit good blokes too. And... You know, that's really important because good blokes can create a bond and a mateship and yep. a camaraderie that you need in, in, in a tough game like ours. Um, and then I, I want blokes who are really passionate and, and, and um, they love doing what they do because it's a hard game and, and, and it's hard. The hardest part of the game is, as you were just talking about a moment ago, is getting there, you know, getting fit, getting mentally tough, it's having some resilience. And you need the good blokes mm. around you to do that. And you've got to be passionate about yeah. it. You can't just play the game because I'm, I'm earning a good dollar. You, you, get, you get found out, yeah. and then I don't want you. Mm. I want blokes who are passionate about the, uh, the, the job they've got to do, but even as important, I want them passionate about mm. playing for the Canberra Raiders. We have history lessons down there with all our younger players. We have history lessons with the NRL players. They learn about who came it's before, before. And, and we identify what the standards and the values of the Canberra Raiders are. Mm. That's so important for me because when I leave and the next coach comes in, I, I, I really hope that he just continues yeah. the love of the club. But in it, so it's, but I mean, I'm a massive footy nerd. I'm a historian of the game. Like, you know, if I see any older footy players, like you know me, if I'm holding court with my mates, no one's getting a word. In. If I'm yep. there, I'm like it's yep. even now at the age yep. of forty. If I, like you've got to know what comes before you and how important it's it is and like the yourself. legacy you leave. It's why people like yourself, mate. You know, you've, you've found tough times and you've had good people around you to pull you through it. Our end door, I hope you did. Um, I know, you know, I often spoke to your, your father at times and asked how you were. Mate, blokes like yourself can't be lost to the game. You, know, you, you talk to yourself about the historian of the game. That's just your passion. You know? And we can't, we can't lose that in the NRL. We can't lose that in rugby league. Whether you're coaching a young team or whether you're coaching a, um, um, a first grade team. That passion and emotion for the game itself can't be lost. I know you've got to get going. So we've got a couple, couple of questions left. Two people, I think, I thought just on Sunday, I thought George Room was terrific. George uh, Williams? Yeah, this year. And he was a young fella at, um, at Wigan when I was yeah. leaving. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, course, probably yeah. lucky he got out. I left the year I did because if it was another year or two, we would have played together and he may have never even got on the uh, plane to come over here. But um, I thought he was terrific. But the two blokes I look at uh, is Whiten and Papali. Um, first on Papali... Both guys probably had tremendous ability, always has, but the consistency and leadership I see now, probably the best front row in the game or in, in the conversation, he, he's the leader of that team. His consistency is through the roof. And Whiten, run me through the move to 5'8", because he was a 
he was a decent fullback. It's not like he, yeah. like oh, this is your last chance to learn. He was a quality fullback. What, what did you see in making that move there where, you know, now he's a Clive Churchill winner and a, a Dalian. Yeah. Like, you know, like going back to Pup, with, with Papa, um, Papa always had the ability, you know that. He, yeah. he always had that um, uh, um, power, explosion yeah. and strength. Papa had to get the consistency and then the first thing was, was to find consistency yeah. in his weight. Once Papa's got his weight and he's consistent at it, it makes the hard work easier, it makes him training easier. Um, and I've, I've really found that he's found the consistency ever since he's got married. Yep. He's got a beautiful wife in, in Sepa, and I believe her support and her leadership at home has helped Papa create the consistency. You always say you, you, you're how you play is a reflection of I the do. life you live in the field. I do, mate. I, I always say that the way you lead your life is the way you play the game of footy. You know, if you're taking shortcuts on your mate, you're going to take shortcuts at home. Yep. Uh, sorry, uh, on the field. The, the thing with uh, Josh, he's... He's found that comfort in his uh, life at the moment and he's finding consistency yep. off the field, which leads on the field. Jackie Whiten, as soon as I got to the club, I, I, I actually publicly said I've never seen a bloke so close to Laurie in regards to how he plays and runs. The, the football, you know, they both lean forward and play. They're strong. They're big men. They're very good defenders. Um, <clears throat> it was a gamble, mate. You know? yeah. and I, I, I was humming and ahhing, humming and ahhing two years ago about this. And I... Um, was I going to have a real good, strong fullback bringing the ball back for us, or was I going to have a real strong line in defence? And I needed a stronger line yeah. in D. So Jack was going to come in yeah. there and learn how to attack from there, yeah. which is a little bit similar to a fullback anyhow. But um, I needed, for the team's sake, Jack to be six. Yeah, big body 5'8's such a big difference. And mate, I, you know, I've said it, I've said it uh, in an interview only last week that you know, I find it my job. So Jack's only played two years at half. Uh, I find it my job this year, I'm going to challenge myself to get Jack into the six at New South Wales. Yeah, you've got to be, done not And the other part of it is, and I've only just had a coffee with Georgie Williams uh, uh, early this week, I had breakfast with him, and I just said, mate, it's my job, I'm going to get you to the English half back yep. this year. That's my challenge. Mm. I, I want to do mate, it. I, look at, I look at you, you talk about passion and competitiveness. You now, we've had some great times, we've butted heads over our time, but one thing you can never say about you, you're not competitive, you're not passionate. And one of those things is you coach from the sideline a lot. I've got a couple of good memories of you coach from the sideline. <laughs> so have I. Mate, I remember we were playing mainly at Brookvale. I was, it was around 2, 2004. I'd had 12 months under you, and we had a real big off-season. I felt comfortable in that pre-season because i come off – when I got there the year before, I'd, I'd um, used to won the comp, and, and quite frankly, I wasn't as confident. Well, fucking, why are they putting me in? When you should be there, you know, and – you're finding your way in a competitive team, and I struggled early in the season, but you stuck with me. That second year, I felt real good. We go to Brookvale, and I've had probably one of my best games I've ever had for the club or in my career. We're winning about 44-6. We get a drop out. There's 25 seconds left. We're up. Ronnie Palmer comes sprinting out to me. I thought, what's going on? He goes, you got to score a try. I said, what do you mean? He says, we need a try. I said, we don't need a try. I said, Ricky said, I said, what exactly did Ricky said? He said, uh, Ronnie, go tell, tell fucking Squirrel Ed to get me a try. I said, we're winning 40 to 6 right here. Like, uh, and we've got to try. We've got to try. And another one was... Um, See, if I didn't tell you. Yeah, exactly. We got it. I believe it was just the field goal or something. But another one was the end of that year. Uh, we, we come in. We're in the city now. We come into um, Shingle Art down the road here for Freddie's testimonials. Freddy's Tuesday testimonial. night. We're playing that th- um, playing that Sunday. T- and we've got to win. I spent 10 grand on yeah. his last origin boot. So if his young bloke wants him, he can have him. Yeah, come and get him. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy him for five and then sell him again for 10. <laughs> Um, we, we, we get all we play that Sunday but we've got to win to get them on a premiership we're blind like blind I remember par- a couple of power coaches there Jason Taylor and that Pete Cusack is that drunk he just falls off his chair at the bar yeah, Moz is spe- yeah, yeah. spewing at the bar they're going we've got these blokes covered anyway we come out and build them like we won our best games we had was after some drinks and that early in the week but I remember coming to you was pissing down at the footy stadium and we're up and you're screaming something at me and you call me over and you've got that coat on and your hair's <laughs> half down here. And you're yelling at me like an hard ear because the, the wind and the rain. This is all true. Yeah. And you, and you go, what, what, what are you grinning at, squirrel head? I said, mate, you should see your fucking head sticky. It's hilarious. And you start laughing. But that's <laughs> oh, some mate. of the good times. But the, the yeah. passion you showed down there, that you're the first coach to really do it, one, in that case, from the sideline. Well, Sheenzy, I liked, I liked my coaches on the sideline. You know, Gus was on the sideline, uh, some of the origins. Sheenzy was always on the sideline. 
I know Bozo was in the stand at times yep. uh, when we were playing in England and close to the action. I liked it as a player. Um, and, mate, don't worry. What you copped, I copped. Uh, I, I, yeah. I copped it as Both. much as what you copped from me, mate. And You know, I, I've still got great uh, relationships with all my old coaches. Yep. In, I talk about Bozo. I talk about Tim. I talk about Gus. I've got great relationships with those blokes. I yep. see them as great friends. And... Um, that's what I see you in. Mm. You and me, mate. It's, yeah, and I, it's, as soon as you got the, I got the phone call from you there a month ago in regards to doing this. I, mm. that's, I thought, I thought I'd ring you. See so if, <laughs> if it texts me, sorry, mate, wrong number. I won't. Yeah. Is this fish? Oh shit! Um, <laughs> Gareth, I was surprised to see yeah. the number six. Just to finish, mate, because I know you, you got a lunch to get to. Through all this, I know your family's re- really important to you, and, and always has been. Uh, not your family, but your, your immediate family, but your mum and yeah, dad, and, and, and your dad. I always seen. When he used to come to the games at the Roosters and both your mum and dad and and obviously your, your foundation you got set up for your daughter. How important have they been through through the whole journey? Because yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything. Um, it's hard for partners. Yeah. You know, it's a tough game. We're away a lot. And, um, now I've never I've never you know, I've always had a, a caring partner who um, understood I wanted to go to the pub with the boys. Um, I mean, she was there that night that um, we all had a big drink at the uh, Shangri-La. We yeah. stayed there that night, I remember. And she was there with us. And, and that's what it's about, um, understanding that, that type of relationship and, you know, those types of nights and events such as Freddie's testimonial, they mm. they, they can be shared with your partner. But there's yeah. times there where they actually have to be at home. And, yeah. and the kids that, uh, you know, I see my players more than my kids. My yeah. kids. But it's uh, part of the job. I get emotional about it. Mm. But... That's me. Um, And mum and dad, they still love the game and follow what I do and dad still tells me who to pick and (laughs) where I've gone wrong. So how I used to get into you, he gets into me um, and still does. Um, But I love it. I I love the the, the emotions and the passion passion around families and that's what I want to take to my players as as a relationships and and, and I try to have them understand how important family is. Yeah. And and just to finish, just the viewers at home or anyone listening, some of Ricky John Stewart's great training sessions. We'll get the boys on the drink at dinner in Coffs Harbour. Then I'll wake them up at midnight when they're all just falling asleep. We'll do hill runs till about yeah. two in the morning. I was I ran with you. You did. And I was the first one to spew. Exactly. And I spewed. And then it was just a chain, chain reaction. <laughs> it was like the beep test once the first bloke goes out. Then, then Morley spewed yeah. straight after me. Yeah. We, we did back-to-back <laughs> beep tests. I'm not talking on the – do a beep test. And then do it back to back again, and we, we put the car on the top of the hill and put the headlights, headlights on. on. Yeah. Middle of, we're in the middle of nowhere in Kosava. I remember we did a back to back beep test, and you go after we did the first one. You weren't happy with people's results. This is the first day back. We go. Yeah, we're going again. For every level someone misses, that's a one 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 hundred meters we've got to do. Well, blokes are getting nowhere near it. Me and Wingy go. We'll try and get better than our first one to get some taken back off. So we finish and go, boys. This bloke. This bloke. This bloke. This bloke. This bloke. You couldn't achieve the one, the, the same score you got the one before. That's not good enough. You should have the mental toughness to get the same. And, for, and I'm sitting there going, I can't wait. He's going to wrap me up because I got better. And for you blokes who got better the, than the first time, you so weak because you should have got that the first time. I'm like, oh, I could win. Um, mate, thanks for joining uh, us. You're, uh, you're very dangerous with your memory. Tell me. Honestly. And I've had three glasses of water. Uh, mate, thanks for joining me. I know you're coming up here and you've got some stuff to I do. And I really it, appreciate it. It was great catching up now. Of, um, now I've got a few things off my chest. I won't have to go to the psychiatrist later on this <laughs> afternoon. Good, but, luck, uh, good luck to you, mate. You yeah. met your beautiful wife and yeah. your beautiful daughter. Good luck to you too. Yeah, thanks, mate. Appreciate yeah. it. And uh, have a beer for me today. I will. Thanks, mate. Or two. Thanks to you. <laughs> or ten. <laughs>